What is good guys, it's Ray J back with another video and in this one we're going to be talking about the one and only SPY, the NASDAQ, the QQQs and the indices. Break down what the charts are telling us and what you should be watching for tomorrow and why on earth we did see some very big updates that just came out from Jerome Powell. Before I break anything down about what Jerome Powell just said, how this may affect the markets going forward, and what you should be watching for, I do have to mention a couple of things before starting. Firstly, I'm not a financial planner. Make sure you take none of this as financial advice whatsoever. And also, if you guys can, please smash the like button if you want to see more videos like this. It not only benefits me, it benefits the entire community as a whole. And the last thing is, if you guys can, please check out the Moomoo link down below and in the description. If you sign up for Moomoo, the link down below. And deposit $100 into the account, you're guaranteed 7 free stocks. And any could be a free Tesla share. It's a limited time offer. The offer ends in just 9 days. So check it out before they run out. With that out of the way, let's get on with the video. So anyways, when it comes to SPY, I just want to break down something very important. SPY is down about 1.7%. And seeing SPY drop like this, I just want to note to everyone that this was in reaction to the things that Jerome Powell said. And Powell was not actually very helpful for the markets and the bulls out there. He gave a lot of them a very, very big, rude awakening. Now, he did say some things that were technically bullish, but the large majority of what he said ended up actually favoring the bears. I'm going to break down exactly why that is, what actually happened today. Start us off, the market was holding up in the beginning, just trading sideways, not really doing much. Then the new hike decision came out, and that was the Fed raised the federal funds rate by 25 basis points. In the beginning, the market still held up. It didn't really drop way too much. And then we ended up seeing it actually just start to drop a little bit by the time Jerome Powell came on before it got a really nice bounce while he was speaking. And then finally, after the final bounce, we saw a really, really, really big drop near the end of the day. Now, why did the market drop so hard? It was because of what Jerome Powell said. A couple of the things he said caused the market to get a final bounce, but the majority, the large majority of what he said, more than 80% of his points, favored the bears and i'm going to break down exactly why so i don't really know exactly how you know the market's gonna play out from the very beginning i don't know if we're gonna just you know straight up just tank from here if we're gonna get a bit of a bounce first before we do see more downside uh, but what i'm essentially seeing is whether we get a small bounce tomorrow or not no matter what happens or if it just doesn't even happen we're most likely going to see more downside there's most likely going to be more downside. We're most likely going to see SPY fall all the way down to the 380 soon or even lower. And why is that? Well, the Fed gave us the rude awakening. The Fed came out and they were not necessarily happy. Jerome Powell said that right now, yes, financial conditions have tightened a bit, but it's actually the market is not really reflecting that. Because the market is still, in essence, quite overvalued in a way. Because the market was pricing in the Fed cutting very, very soon. And that's not actually what's going on. Powell did say that there is a pathway to a soft landing. But when he was asked about more details, he said that it's too early to make the call. Uh, he can't say it with 100% certainty if that's even going to happen. He was not as confident as before. Then he started talking about the fact that there's a lot of work to be done. Inflation is way too hot. Uh, he did mention the fact that other regulators will use their tools to protect depositors. But at the same time, the Fed is going to have to continue to raise rates even higher. He's saying that even though the banking situation is going through hardships, he did trivialize it, in my opinion, to some degree. He made it seem like it wasn't as horrible as it really is, in my opinion. And that's kind of okay because he's not trying to panic the markets way too badly. But he was telling us that there is going to be some price stability. He did encourage people to actually have trust in the banks, at least for the time being. That's one of the things I disagree with Powell on. But besides that, the majority of what he said was still more hawkish. He said that the Fed did consider pausing because of the banks, but they ended up not doing so as of right now. And they don't plan on doing it during the next meeting. They actually plan on giving us another 25 basis point hike, then pausing after that by the time we get to June. And they plan to keep rates high until the end of the year. And then they plan on cutting in 2024. The problem is 
Powell is now, you know, helping people remember the fact that the market was betting on the Fed cutting this year, the pivot starting this year, and that's not what they're planning on doing. The market did not like that. Now, Powell also said something very important, and that is people are wrong about, you know, predicting some sort of like rate cuts, but at the same time, he also criticized Silicon Valley Bank. And the final thing I was going to mention is the fact that he said that the Fed is not going to prioritize raising rates as much as before because they need to tighten financial conditions. But to do so, they don't have to solely raise rates. Instead, they're going to leave them high and they're going to let the market do the work for them, meaning that eventually we're going to start seeing you know jobs basically people lose their jobs. We're going to start to see stress in the credit markets. We're going to see stress in the housing departments. We're going to start to see more tightening. And this is actually not good for the markets. If the news comes out tomorrow and they start saying things about how the bank's tightening is going to equal the same effect of rate hikes increasing, that's going to be bearish, very, very bearish news. So we just have to be very patient on this. He did anticipate, once again, tighter credit conditions and many other things like that. So I went over the majority of the things. Tomorrow, we have initial jobless claims coming out one hour before the market opens. Uh, We're also going to see home sales, but that's not as significant as jobless claims, in my opinion, after the Fed just spoke. So we want this to be hot. If this is high, this would be good for the markets. We want it to be above uh, what the previous number was and also the forecast of 193,000. Then we also have on Friday, not really too much besides Bullard giving a speech. Then for next week, we also have, I believe, PCE is going to be coming out and also more job numbers. And also, I believe we have the uh, GDP growth numbers. So a lot of things are coming out next week near the end of the week. But besides that, uh, how is all this going to affect the markets now? I believe because we dropped so hard on SPY in a very short period of time, Depending on the jobs numbers, it's going to depend on that where we open. I'm thinking we might see a bit of a balance into open, uh, sorry, a balance into open, and we might see the market try to rebound just a little bit, but I don't think it's going to be very strong. I think it's going to just trade sideways, try to get to 393, maybe even 395, and I'm not really counting on it going that high. But then I do see more continued selling as time goes on. We're likely going to see SPY come all the way down to 390 very soon. If the news is very, very scary for the bulls and we start to see more news come out about the Fed tightening and, you know, the bank failures and things like that, it could get even worse and we could see this thing break below 390 as soon as tomorrow. So whether we just straight up crash tomorrow or if we get a bit of a bounce first and then we see a pullback, either way. I'm anticipating downside eventually. I do think SPY is going to eventually come back down to 380. We're going to be testing this within the next week and a half to two weeks. Most likely that's going to be the case. And you have to be prepared for that just in case. All right. So even if we get a small bounce, it doesn't matter too much to me. They're all most likely going to be uh, followed by more selling pressure. Tomorrow, I think we might gap up tomorrow, try to get a small bounce since we dropped so hard. But I think as the day goes on tomorrow, we're going to see more selling and we might actually, once again, come down to about 390, maybe a little lower. TQQQ, in my opinion, most likely going to turn bullish, try to get a bounce, not what the market was essentially hoping for. And I also want to note that as of right now, there's been a really nice downtrend that has been being respected, started pushing up a little bit. Once again, we're going to likely see this change in directions very soon. We're also going to likely see the SQQQ bounce, trying to push up from here. The exact opposite of what the market and the triple Q are wanting. Amazon might try to push up. Likely it's going to fail again. I think it's in a topping process. Might be forming like a head and shoulders like formation. But overall, I do see Amazon starting to decrease in value and start coming down tesla whether we get a bounce or not does not matter it's probably going to be a small bounce to like 193 but overall i think it's still starting to show some signs of relative weakness we're going to come all the way down 
to fill this gap around 183. If it fails tomorrow to hold 190, if it fails at 188 then, then it's going to fill the gap most likely within a day or two to 183. And if that fails, if it fails to hold like 180, there's another gap all the way down in the 170s. Looking at AMC, small bounce, completely normal. Overall, though, I do see her slowly coming back down to $4 to retest the support. NVIDIA, it actually held above 264, went a little bit higher than I expected. But overall, it looks like it's in the topping process. The daily looks like it has a doji. I think this thing has more room for downside. We might trade kind of sideways and we might eventually see this thing come down to the 260 flat area. I don't know if the market is going to try to push up a little bit more for this because this is still relatively strong. Could try to push up a little bit before it does end up coming down or it might just come down immediately. But overall, I'm seeing downside. For NEO, this is forming a very bearish looking structure. We have a potential head and shoulders developing with the left shoulder, the head, the right shoulder. Um, in my opinion, whether we get a bounce or not is going to be not really mattering too much because we're most likely going to fill the gap into the 8.7s, get to the 8.5s, and continue to drop. Apple had a rising wedge. I was showing you guys this just a couple of days ago. Actually, yesterday. We have this rising wedge-like formation. We're starting to break down. If it fails at 157.5, I think it might try to bounce off this first, try to get back to like almost 160 or the high 150s, but it's likely going to fail. Trade a little sideways, then continue to bleed. And maybe later on, as the days go on, Apple's going to start testing a lot of these supports, 154.5, 150, you know, and etc. So please be ready for it. Google, for me, has some relative strength to it after the big event. I do believe Google might try to bounce tomorrow, trying to get above 105, but it's likely going to start dropping, and we're likely going to see, you know, this thing come all the way down to like 102, all the way down to 100, and then we have another, you know, amount of support around like 96 to 88. I'm seeing just downside, market either pushing up and reversing or just more downside, IWM, same thing. We're going to retest 170. If that fails, I'm going to be watching 168. And there's still a lot of room for downside for it. The dollar did come down, but in my opinion, 102 is a very important level. The dollar could bounce very soon. If the dollar gets the bounce we're waiting for at this very important 102 zone, 102.5 especially, because it actually closed above 102.5, this would be bearish for the market. So if we could see this thing get a bounce, because of the banking situation, we're seeing the dollar weakening, especially because the Fed increased their balance sheet. But I do believe as financial conditions tighten, we could see the dollar reverse, once again, changing everything. The VIX got a very, very beautiful bounce off 20. It looks bullish. Overall, it still looks more bullish. Whether we come down a little bit to cool off and then we just establish a higher low, and then keep going later on, or if we just keep going from here, it looks bullish. It looks like it's going to head its way back to 26.9, followed by 28, and then 30. It looks like the VIX is getting ready to fly again. Why? Because the market is like, most likely going to come down. So anyways, thank you all so much for listening. The bottom line is the market most likely has more downside. Remain calm, cool, and collected. Do what you have to do, and I'll see you guys in the next one. The market to the moon because the long-term future is still very bright and peace out.